Yangon, a river city, the capital of Myanmar, a country surrounded by India, China, Laos and Thailand. Few cities in Asia boast such a fascinating melee of tribes and cultures. A tranquil harmony of churches, pagodas, Hindu temples and mosques. Here, contrast is all. And that makes Yangon unique. The morning market means an early start to the day. The local people are content with the simple life. Women in traditional clothing paint their faces with tanaka paste. Many chew betel nuts or smoke cigarettes. A colorful scene. Here, time stands still. Little has changed since Rudyard Kipling visited this city when he was 23 years of age and was fascinated by its many aspects. An intriguing blend of numerous ethnic groups and cultures, tolerant and peaceful people who enjoy life. Four stairways that are directed towards the four cardinal points lead to Burma's national sanctuary, the legendary Shwedagon Pagoda. Visitors enter this splendid temple via its southern entrance. From the top of the hill is a 60,000 square meter high terrace with an amazing number of smaller stupas that surround the tallest central stupa. There are numerous myths and legends of the valuable decor and various treasures of the Shwedagon Pagoda that is one of the most famous religious buildings in the Buddhist world. According to legend, the Mon Queen, Shin So Bu, was the first leader to have her body weight represented by gold, which was duly donated to the improvement of the pagoda. Even though the sanctuary received only around 45 kilograms of gold, it was enough to decorate the entire pagoda. It is believed that Dharma Zedi, the successor of the Mon Queen, donated four times more gold and also introduced a new tradition, that of making generous gifts to the pagoda following Lent. Over the years, donations gradually increased until in 1774, the pagoda attained its present height. Following an earthquake that devastated vast areas of the sanctuary in 1768, the king ordered that the Shwedagon Pagoda be extended. The tall, gilded, great stupa is the main and magnificent focal point of the Yangon Sanctuary. The golden stupa rises 98 meters into the air, its spire crowned by a golden ball that is decorated with more than 4,000 diamonds. Although this sanctuary has witnessed a dramatic past, Yangon's Shwedagon Pagoda in today's Myanmar is still a highly important religious monument.
Close by is the Chowtat Ki Pagoda that contains one of the largest prone Buddha statues in the world. Its length makes up for its lack of artistry as it's 70 meters long. Over 600 monks live in the adjoining monastery that was founded in 1907 for the study of Buddhist scripts that are known as Palikarums. East of the monastery is the Botatang Pagoda that dates back to before Christ. Bo means officer and Tatong means 1000. A thousand military officers escorted a number of Buddhist monks from India. They brought with them Buddha relics for this pagoda. The present building originated after the Second World War from the ruins of a bombed sanctuary. But for archaeologists, this destruction brought some interesting surprises. Relics that had once lain hidden could be examined in detail. In addition to various precious stones, they came across 700 Buddha figures. Of special significance was the discovery of a terracotta plate with an inscription in Pali, ancient South Indian Brahmi text. The markets have always played an important role in Yangon and Scott Market is the largest. Since the country's independence, it is now also known as Bogyoki Ongsan. It contains a multitude of goods, fresh fruit, vegetables, fish and cakes, a tempting display. Snacks are also on offer. Several small restaurants and kitchens serve freshly prepared food that is extremely popular with the tourists. You can buy virtually anything here, and it's one of the most relaxed markets of old Asia. Outside the market, the streets are full of busy traffic, the familiar hustle and bustle of modern life. Kaba Ai Pagoda is also known as the Pagoda of Global Peace. Monks from all over the Buddhist world once came here over a period of two years. The sanctuary was built for the sixth Buddhist synod when the 2500th birthday of Buddha was commemorated here. Relics of the most important followers of Buddha, Sariputta and Mughalana, are stored here. They are guarded by several golden Buddha statues. A number of man-made concrete caves, the Mahapasana Caves, are located here. They provide accommodation for 10,000. The center of the city is gradually changing. The Sule Pagoda lies at the heart of the city, but the surrounding streets are full of frenzied activity. It's even an adventure to cross the road. Radiant shrines surround a 48 meter high gilded stupa in the center of a large roundabout. It's a useful landmark when finding your way around the city.
The pagoda was built prior to Yangon's existence. It is believed to date back to the time of the Indian king Ashoka and was built by monks. It is said that one of the Buddha's hairs is stored within the pagoda. An extraordinary place of typical Mon design. During almost 90 years of occupation, the British designed Yangon city streets. The Royal Park extends around the Royal Lake, a place of calm and contemplation. Here one can relax under the shade of the huge old trees. The park's playgrounds, tiny summer houses and picnic spots attract Yangon's families as well as exhausted tourists suffering from the heat of the day. Obscured by trees is a replica of a royal ship. In former times, the monarchy used such vessels to travel on the country's rivers. In the late evening sunlight, the stone Karawik ship in the middle of the lake looks astonishingly true to life. It is pulled by two shining golden beings. The Karawik ship offers excellent food and traditional music and dance. Various ethnic groups perform their skills here. The dancers leap across the stage in front of the spectators. The scene is of a fairy tale land populated by princes and princesses. Puppets are also part of Pue art that is a combination of dance, music and comedy. The choreography of this Burmese dance adheres to strict tradition. The artists are trained in various academies devoted to the arts. In the dry season, the Pue groups travel from festival to festival. In Yangon, the early morning is the best time to travel to the nearby city of Bago, a wonderful place. Bago was once the capital of the second Burmese realm. It was thought by Europeans to be the most magnificent city in the East, a fact highlighted by its many splendid monuments. This once glorious epoch is manifested by the Shui Mordo Pagoda. Although damaged by several devastating earthquakes, after each one it was lovingly restored. This sacred building was constructed in order to store precious relics within its walls. In actual fact, two of Buddha's hairs that some traders brought here from India. One hundred and fourteen meters tall, this is the country's largest stupa and dates back to 1954. It was regilded in 1990. When its large river filled up with silt, Bago fell into decline. But the city has retained its great cultural heritage. Long corridors adorned with numerous paintings lead to one of the pagoda's main attractions. The huge prone Shweta Leong Buddha, 55 meters long and 16 meters tall. It is the most beautiful prone Buddha in Myanmar. Beyond the city is another fine sanctuary, the Kyaik Pun Pagoda that was built in 1476.
Four Buddha figures seated back to back stare relentlessly at the four points of the compass. They represent Gautama Buddha and his three predecessors, Konogamana, Kakusanja, and Kasapa. The peace and quiet of rural life appears to be enjoyed by the country's fishermen and farmers. And the paddy fields usually turn in a good harvest. The Kyakalo Pagoda has been well preserved and the corridors of its inner sanctuary are frequented by the faithful. Numerous illustrations help to explain various facets of religious life. Magnificently adorned zidis are yet another example of the huge diversity of Buddhist architecture. The shining golden stupas are religious status symbols and highlight the importance of religion in Myanmar. On our return to Yangon is a reminder of the Second World War. The Taukyant Military Cemetery, thousands of Allied soldiers are buried here. Back in the city, we visit the most famous street of colonial times, the Strand. The finest colonial buildings once stood here, such as the present day Strand Hotel. This splendid building was renovated at the beginning of the 1990s and is a sparkling treasure of bygone times. A street of nostalgia located between a former world of luxury and the banks of the Yangon River. The Yangon River is still the city's main lifeline. It connects the Andaman and Sea with the busy metropolis and trade has never been better. It's all go from early in the morning until late in the evening, fishing boats moving to and fro with cargo being loaded, while there's cooking beneath the open sky. The people seem to be constantly on the move and their happy faces demonstrate their joie de vivre, although poverty is rife here. There are several ferry services that also travel to many of the more remote locations along the river. Now travel on a canal to explore the surroundings of Yangon and take a closer look at the landscape and its people. The riverbank is flanked by one house after another, each with a boat lying at anchor. The streets of this region are its waterways. On each side are endless fields that are constantly flooded during the monsoons, yet this is the most fertile region in Myanmar. Three seasons determine the climate of this subtropical country, the cool of winter, the heat of summer and the monsoons. At that time, it rains for most of the afternoon and entire regions are flooded. But then follows the lush green sight of endless paddy fields. After a journey of two hours, the old riverboat stops at a landing stage.
We have arrived at Twante, a typical river delta town. Both people and goods exit the ship and new passengers come on board. This is a truly rural place. It's reminiscent of those stories told by Rudyard Kipling about this exotic country. Carrying eating bowls and fans, monks of various ages walk in a long line through the village and beg for their daily food. Both horse and ox wagons travel the sandy streets to the Shui Sandor Pagoda on the edge of the village. The 76 metre high sanctuary is thought to be 2,000 years old and contains yet another two of Buddha's hairs. It is believed that Duante was once inhabited by the Mon tribe. The region is known for its pottery. It's still made in the traditional way without any modern tools. The loam from the riverbed is mixed with sand and then moulded on potter's wheels into various shapes and sizes. The potters work in huge buildings that are covered with palm leaves. The pottery is fired in large ovens once a month. For the return journey to Yangon, we travel on a small road. This is a fine way to take in the landscape and enjoy the friendly smiles of the local people. For generations, the women of these small villages have made joss sticks and bamboo mats. They work diligently within the cool shade of their houses. The men tend to the fertile land using simple methods. Three times a year, they harvest the rice. Glass blowing has long been a tradition here. These skilled craftsmen create true works of art and often achieve a high price on the world market. We encounter a group of dancers and musicians who are accompanying a marriage party to the next village. On our journey back to the city, we cross the Yangon River by ferry boat. Hundreds of gulls accompany the boat on its slow journey across the river. The captain steers the boat cautiously through the hectic river traffic. And on the riverbank, traders await the arrival of new customers. It's like travelling back in time to the colonial days of British Rangoon. Hopefully this fascinating city will continue to retain its captivating charm. Yangon is unique, a golden fairy tale behind a tantalizing bamboo curtain.